welcome to my series about all Chopin's music. Um, as you could hear, today we focus on uh, pure beauty. Very sweet, charming, beautiful Nocturno in B major, Opus 9, number 3. The last Nocturno which Chopin published in his uh, triptych, uh, the three Nocturnos that he put together in Opus 9. Uh, this Nocturno, if you know all, uh, I mean, of course you know uh, the other two, because they are probably one of the most favorite, most popular uh, Chopin's Nocturnos, Opus 9, number one, which is this one. A little sad, melancholic, um, piece of music where we have some kind of love but it's more like missing somebody. Number two, which is a pure love, a beautiful song about love. And then we have number three which is something else. Um, then we can maybe say that these three nocturnos are um, three different um, ways of showing the same thing. We, we can say maybe love. We know that Chopin that time was deeply in love with uh, an opera singer, young opera singer, and um, Constanza Gładkowska was her name. And uh, because of her, he wanted the piano to sing. I was talking about it in my other videos about Nocturno Opus 9 number one and Opus 9 number two. So if you didn't watch it, please do so. So that you can know more about it. Um, but this Nocturno is different, it's a little different. We don't know exactly when it was written, but we presume that Chopin wrote this Nocturno already in Vienna, um, so later than he wrote number one and number two. Uh, this Nocturno is, well, one thing is almost for sure, that this Nocturno was written definitely later than the other two, because it shows. We have Chopin more mature, we have Chopin who thinks more about the, the structure, and we also have Chopin who is changing the structure uh, comparing to John Field's Nocturnos. This is the first Nocturne of Chopin that really will have its own unique uh, structure, and uh, we are going to talk about it. A structure which Chopin will follow in his most of his next Nocturnos, um, throughout his life, which is mm, more or less, we can say, ABA structure. Uh, but the first question that I would like to ask here, the open question, but question for you, my listeners, is what is the character of this music? As I said, the character of number one uh, from this opus is melancholic and sad, full of kind of um, sadness and longing. Number two is a pure love. So then what is number three? we have love as well also we have the the B major key which Chopin used when he was wanted to express this beautiful feeling but we also have something more we have Chopin himself who is giving us a um, recommendation in Italian of how he wanted this uh, music to be played Chopin writes scherzando. 
Scherzando means uh, joking, right? So it's like a joke. It should be light, funny, joking. And when we open the website of uh, National Chopin Institute in Warsaw, maybe you know that on the website of National Chopin Institute we have the short description of practically every Chopin's piece. This is a fantastic thing and the description is made uh, by a very, I mean, it, by a great uh, musicologist and uh, very famous Polish professor who unfortunately is, is dead now, but um, he had a very long and fruitful life that he um, in a way confessed to Frédéric Chopin. He wrote a lot of very big books about Chopin. His name was Mieczysław Tomaszewski. Maybe you know him. And I respect him very much. But what I read here, I want, I want to quote a, a little and ask you, what do you think about it? <sighs> about this nocturno. The initial theme proceeds allegretto and has a character that is unusual for a nocturne. Scherzando. And now listen to this. Pianists do not apply that injunction to literally. It would seem that Chopin's main intention was for the narrative to flow along smoothly. The ostensibly li lively melody should be sung with ample long breaths. And my question now is, why the pianists do not apply what Chopin wrote? And why Professor Mieczysław Tomaszewski didn't write here that they are wrong? <laughs> well, that's, of course, he maybe he, he cannot write this, but in, in, in what he writes is in a kind of that it's natural not to follow what Chopin wrote. And I must say here, I'm totally against that. Because Chopin, with his own hand, is writing at the beginning Scherzando. And now who we are, who are we? to tell Chopin that he was wrong. Who are we to tell Chopin that he was mistaken? That the melody is not funny. That this this should be like a nocturno. As you can see, I'm getting a little emotional and a little angry. A little. Well, I control myself. But this for me is a very personal thing. So please forgive me a little personal... Um, a little personal... Uh, description now uh, taken from my life but I do hope that for you it might be interesting even though it has nothing to do with the analysis of the nocturno but I will tell you as, uh, as my own personal uh, experience that I had with this nocturno first of all this nocturno is the first nocturno that I really played uh, I learned by Chopin and I played and immediately I fall in love with this and I played it for many many years and I won a few competitions playing this nocturno and I remember my professor from the Music Academy in Katowice in Poland, uh, Professor Józef Stompel, he was in love with my interpretation of this nocturno and, and many other professors and musicians and the audience always loved my performance, which made me think that and feel that I played it quite well. Uh, and I always respected the scherzando and which Chopin writes here. And now comes my story. I remember many years ago I attended a very big competition in Europe. I, I, I'm not going to tell you exactly which competition it was, but just to tell you that the first prize was 30,000 euro, so you can, and, and many concerts, so you can probably, you can try to guess which competition was there. I mean, there are a few, but it was like the, the biggest one. And, uh, I was accepted. I remember that the competition had three rounds and I made it to the semi-final when we had, I think there was only six pianists performing in the semi-final and I was so happy. And then in the semi-final I played this Nocturno at the beginning and then I played the Schumann Fantasy in C major, Opus 17, one of my beloved pieces. Uh, because those two pieces are about love. So if you know, 
the Suman Fantasy, you would probably agree that they fit together. And I played, I thought I played quite well, but I didn't make it to the finals. But it's okay, you always accept this, uh, being a pianist, but what happened next uh, made me a little sad and frustrated, in fact, because we had, after the results, we have a dinner and a meeting with the jury members, and as me as often during competitions you can talk to them, you can ask them uh, their opinion about your playing and so on. So I did, because I always love to learn from such experiences. So I asked, I remember I talked with one of the jury members and then he told me, you know, your Schumann was really fantastic, very touching and beautiful and... Uh, I loved it, he said, but surprisingly, your Chopin, I didn't understand at all, he said. And you are from Poland and you play Nocturno in such a funny way, light and funny, as if you are joking, he said to me. You know, I wrote and he showed me this, that it should be romantic, it should be like a Nocturno, and you write here as if you are telling a joke. Well, when he was telling me this, my eyes gets bigger, bigger, bigger and bigger. And then I, when he finished, I asked him, Sir, one question. Do you know what Chopin himself wrote at the beginning of this piece? Uh, what kind of character this Nocturno has? And then he said to me, well, oh, I don't remember now, he said. Then I told him, you know, he wrote Scherzando. And I said, it's the only Nocturno by Chopin that is Scherzando. He was speechless. He almost choked, you know? And, well, I left him with this. I didn't want to tell him more, but definitely I wanted to tell him more because, you know, if I were a jury member of such a big, important competition, I would at least get acquainted to all the pieces that the young pianists are playing because this is a huge responsibility in my opinion and now comes the the problem of huh, you play what the composer wrote and you are out because of that but so that's why as as you say as you see uh, i got personal and when i read this uh, in professor Mieczysław tomaszewski i got even more uh, how to say frustrated because i still don't understand why we allow the pianist not to follow what Chopin wrote. In my opinion, we must do it, especially that Chopin writes three times in this Nocturno Scherzado, which I will tell you now and show you. So, funny, Scherzando, light. And of course we can ask, oh, this is Nocturno, it should not be. Well, Chopin knows better what it should be. And I think that it's a portrait. This Nocturno, the first part of this Nocturno, is a portrait of... Um, Gwatkowska, of the singer, of young, coquettish, very beautiful lady, which Chopin was in love with, and she was in love with him. We can imagine her, you know, maybe a little dancing, because this is actually for on three. Well, we have it on six, but it's on three. To three, one, to three, one, to three, one. Two. This is the accompaniment of the left hand. Very unusual for the Nocturno also. And also, unusual, so also, if we go further, we could say, Chopin is mistaken, he should, we cannot write such a nocturno, in nocturno we cannot write such a waltz-like accompaniment, one, two, three, one, two, three, it should be different, let's change it, right? And then the pianist can change, for example, <laughs> character gets completely different we cannot we cannot do it okay so she is dancing and she's joking if you listen carefully to this melody you can hear the very strange rhythm tam ta ta tam ta ta tam right and now I show you the first joke which we have here, because there are a few jokes. The, the first joke is 
as follows. We have this rhythm here. And then as the answer, we have a completely different rhythm, even though we should have the same rhythm because the melody is the same. So I play for you now how it should be, and then you will understand what is so special about it. And now how it is. Right? It's different. It's it's, it's like there so, there are two persons and they are joking together. The 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 second one is joking with the first one or is laughing at the first one. Um, this is this is very funny. So in my opinion, the more funny we play it, the better for the piece. Of course, to to be precise, I'm not saying that the whole nocturno is scherzando. No. But the first melody. Is definitely scherzando and should be a scherzando melody because now we come to the analysis um, I said the first melody yes because that's how I want to analyze this nocturno I wanted to I want to count the melodies and show you how they correspond with each other because with one another because it's also a kind of very not very typical way how Chopin is constructing this first part of the nocturno so let's see how it is constructed. We have the first melody, as I showed you already, full of jokes. And dance like. Okay, this was the first phrase, and then this phrase is repeated, but with some variations. So Chopin is, is uh, putting some other clothes to these motifs. Listen. Now instead of this, we have this. And then instead of this, sorry, instead of this, we have this. We don't have the second phrase, this one. We don't have it, but instead we have melody number two. Melody number two, which is very important. And here the character is also changing. Chopin writes here espressivo. When he writes espressivo, he means that there is, it's not, no longer scherzando. Because it cannot be scherzando and espressivo at the same time. Espressivo means ex very expressive, so expressing some feelings, probably love. And this second melody is, consists on one only motif, only one will repeat it three times. And it's something like we say something to somebody one time, but he doesn't listen to us, so we repeat again still doesn't listen. So then the third time, what we are doing? We say it louder. We say it much louder and Chopin is doing so. And it brings us to a kind of a little drama, we can say, with the long note, dramatic long note, after which it's very funny again. It's something like this beautiful lady for a second had some kind of dramatic thoughts inside her, but then she, she do like this, you know, oh, never mind, let's be happy, let's live here and now. The past or the future is not important. And she do it in a very funny way, almost as if she's laughing. Ha ha ha, ha ha ha. You know, this is exactly how it's written and it's very similar to Mozart music. Um, so let's listen to this second melody now. The first motif. Repeat it. Repeat it third time. Little drama. And now laughing. And this is the end of the melody number two. How charming! 
genius. Um, yes, so um, it is a little like some bad thoughts are coming into our heads, and but for a second, and then we push them away by laughing at them. We say, no, now we are happy. Don't think about the future. Don't think about that they will be uh, apart, that Chopin is going away. Don't think about it now. We don't. We don't want to do it. Very, very beautiful. Then what happens next is um, everything is repeated. Chopin repeats par, uh, the first melody with some other embellishments, so some other variations. Uh, so again, a different clothes. And then he also repeats melody number two. So now let's listen to two times, melo two melodies. Number one, number two, number one, number two, with some embellishments. But mind you that the embellishments are only made in melody number one. So the variations are only in melody number one. Scherzano, but I have to stop, sorry, because I, I want to tell you this right now. Here's the second time when Chopin writes a scherzando. So he really means it. This part is a very strange variation. Is written against scherzando, just if you just in case you forgot. This is scherzando, says Chopin. Okay, listen again. And now Melody number two. Personally, my favorite one. This melody is written sostenuto. Chopin writes sostenuto, which means a little, a little uh, uh, slower. Well, this is also very interesting. Uh, this melody um, consists of two parts, and let's make a short characteristic. Let's analyze it. First, let's listen to this, this melody. And let's focus now how it is built. So listen. Slow melody. And now fast. Again slow. And again fast. This was the first part, and then the second part brings us some kind of uh, in quietness, some kind of uh, building the drama, building energy, uh, building the feeling of uh, being afraid of something. And faster, and faster, says Chopin, faster. Melody number 
number three. So the first part is um, built on a kind of uh, motivical contrast, we could say. We have a slow motif and fast motif, so maybe, but it's, it's, it is the, the one melody. Oh, it's obvious, but from a musical point of view, these are like two different motifs. And of the, the character, it's not scherzando at all, this is a character of expressing love. Well, I can't imagine something else than somebody saying I love you by, by singing this. <laughs> We have this fast, and again the first motif, and the second, and it was so beautiful. And now, unfortunately, some kind of drama. Drama is is, is too big word here, but the the character is changing. Number two, listen. A little strange because we shouldn't have here melody number two. We should have melody number one. Well, like, you know, uh, Considering the fact that this melody number three was the middle part, then we should go back to the beginning, but we, we don't. We have melody number two instead. And after melody number two, melody number two, melody number three again appears. And even more beautiful with more variations. So just listen. <laughs> time drama is even bigger. Um, I play for you again. And then we have again melody number two. So for the fourth time already, it seems like Chopin really loved this melody. He he made he put it so many times. This is important. After this laughter, for the fourth time, we have the wrong note at the end. Instead of... We have... And suddenly... Suddenly the storm started. Starts. Sorry. So this is the first nocturno when Chopin decides to put the middle part uh, with a huge contrast, dark, uh, dramatic, very different. It was his idea and personal decision, of course, that he followed later in, his, in most of his other nocturnos, um, that the middle part of the nocturno was a, in a way contrasting. Of course, not in every nocturno 
we have something like this, but in quite many. Uh, you will notice uh, while we are we will be making this journey through all the nocturnos. Um, what? How is constructed this middle a dramatic section? We have here three, uh, three different voices, I would call it. First, the left hand, which the left hand is giving us the feeling of um, uh, in quietness, of, is, is very fast and reminds us a little bit when we have the storm, you know, the trees are moving very fast or the wind is a very fast wind. That's what we have in the left hand. <laughs> many fast notes in the bass, usually we have the dramatic character. Chopin is using this also in the etude, for example, you know, when he wants to show the feeling of drama, the revolution. Here we have a little different, but still. A little like an etude, but of course it's not. Then we have the melody. Uh, which is a little um, kind of like um, I would say mm, a fighting melody, the melody which some soldiers are singing or some kind of war melody. Just listen. This is a little like this, in my opinion. And we have the third voice, which uh, when, when you listen to the whole thing, you can't really, uh, you can't hear it because it's deeply inside, in the middle of those two. But it's very important because it is always late. Oh, it's never on time, always too late. It's like this. So we have chords, but they are always too late. Why they are late? Why, why are they late? Are, they are late uh, to, uh, to make the impression of in quietness even bigger. Because the music is... Uh, there is a lot inside going on. Uh, uh, under this melody. So let's listen to this. <laughs> through all, all this part but before I wanted you to I wanted to point out some other thing for you Chopin here is very precise when it comes to the dynamic when it comes to where we play loud where we play silent this is a very important thing in making music in this middle part so we have to strictly follow what he wrote because he knew the best, right? What to do? Now I show you and I, I tell you why it is so important. Because we have, in a way, we have somebody who is begging for mercy. The, the motif who is begging for mercy will always appear piano. And the cruel thing will appear in the forte. It starts with the forte, so the drama. Even more. Then we have this one note, boom, which is very aggressive for the nocturno. And after this, suddenly we have begging for mercy. Just listen. This. As if somebody is begging, please. Mercy on me, don't kill me. But then we have again this one note as if some kind of weapon, you know, very, very dramatic. Chopin writes this forzato, I'm not playing it from myself. And then again piano. 
almost like somebody's crying. And then again the same. <laughs> Before this magic happens, let me finish uh, with this middle part. So, we can hear this dramatic mood. It's very clear, I think, very obvious. What, what maybe you couldn't hear before, I, and I hope now it's uh, more clear, was this dialogue between two motifs, between the strong motif and the weak motif asking for, begging for mercy. Uh, I think this is the clue, this is the, the way of how we should listen to this middle part, uh, because it's, it's just written like that. The, I mean, this is the idea of the composer who wrote it. So. Um, and now let me tell you and talk about this magic. To understand fully the magic that happens um, after the end of part B of the Nocturno, we have to go back to two bars before this old drama started. Two bars before the old drama started, we had what? Melody number two. This was the end of melody number two. A little drama and a laughter. Right? And then this wrong note and then... Okay, and now when we finish part B, sorry, and what do we have here? Two last bars of melody number two. With the wrong note. And then instead of this, we have the beginning of the Nocturno. And this is magic, and this is genius. This is what I really want to show, uh, to, to, to put up, to show you, because it's uh, one of the two, actually, best moments in this Nocturno, from the construction point of view. That it it seems like this middle dramatic part was um, just a dream. It was just a dream because it before we have two bars and after we have two bars. So in if we don't want to play this dream, we can skip it because the music will allow us. I I I hope you understand what I want to say that this two this melody number two is a very, very important melody in the message that Chopin put into this Nocturno. So, melody number two. And then we have the beginning. So, melody number one. Scherzando, again, it's written. So, let's joke. And 
then it should be. And instead we have the second uh, best moment in this nocturno. This motif of laughter, which we already heard five times in this nocturno. Uh, four, sorry, six, no, five, yes, five times. Five times we've heard it. Here now, it's it brings us, it it changes and it brings us to the coda. In coda, when the the love, which Chopin is describing in all three nocturnos in this opus, is just exploding. So I call it an explosion of love. So just listen this instead of this, and we have. An explosion of love. And here is a very special moment. Chopin again writes senza tempo in Italian, which means without the tempo. What does it mean for the pianist? Well, it means play freely. Don't count. Don't think about the tempo. Just play like you, like you feel. So Chopin allows us to play freely and we must do it. There is no tempo in this moment. So... beautiful moment when two hands one starts here the other starts here and they get close to each other maybe they kiss each other this is a kind of symbol and then they go away so it's like a symbol of the last kiss before Chopin leaves for Paris and then they will never meet again listen close here they kiss and then far away a very sweet um, uh, comparison uh, which came to my head uh, very spontaneously I would say but well that's how f ends opus 9 three beautiful favorite nocturnos a public's favorite nocturnos and also my favorite nocturnos i love to play them well i have other also which i love but but uh, i always love to perform this opus and that's how it is constructed young and chopin chopin in love and chopin who is showing his talent to the world for the first time writing and publishing nocturnos Thank you for watching and see you again in my next videos about next Nocturnos Opus 15. Bye bye.